In this Friday Harbor Lab, University of Washington researchers have spent more than five years growing sea stars from these tiny critters to large, beautiful creatures. Last July marked a major milestone. I was there when they released the first lab-grown sea stars into the wild. It's a million questions that we've had about what these stars will do that you know we've been thinking about for years and now we're finally going to get some answers. Since then, they've been monitoring the star's movement. Research scientist Jason Hoden says they had no idea what would happen. We might see them for a day or two or maybe a week and then never see them again. And that could mean that obviously we don't want to believe that they died out there, but it could be that they died out there and we just didn't see it or that they wandered away and that we just never see them again. But now, about one year later, and this success story continues. That's not what happened. What actually happened was we saw at least the two-year-old class, which I said were about um, a salad plate size, are now dinner plate size. And we've seen at least three of those 10 within the last few months and one as recently as like a month ago. The multiple sea stars that are staying put represent hope for saving other parts of the Pacific as well. Part of the main reason we're doing this is not just because we love this sea star, although I think that's good enough reason, but, but that's not the reason why we're really doing this. The reason we're doing this is because we think this sea star has outsized importance. In 2014, disease wiped out sea stars along nearly all West Coast beaches, from Mexico to Alaska. Since then, there's been a domino effect in the Pacific Ocean. Sea stars eat sea urchins, so the sea urchins exploded in population. The excess urchins then began eating away at kelp, which was already suffering from warming waters, and the underwater forest was essentially wiped out. But this discovery that lab-grown sea stars don't leave when released could be huge for reversing that. One really exciting possibility that this, that the research that we've been doing demonstrates is that if they if you put them in a spot that they like and if they like that spot if they're if they like sea, eating sea urchins for example and you put them in a spot with a lot of sea urchins they could probably hang around there and have a big effect simultaneously hoden says scientists are almost ready to release a report that details the disease that wiped them out in the first place this information will further help them place the lab-grown sea stars in the open ocean when we know the cause then we can develop a test and we can develop a test then we can know that any stars that we're going to put out in the field are not carriers of this disease um, that could then devastate the wild populations. This years long research is not done yet, but it's steadily moving toward replenishing a crucial Pacific species. That is fascinating. So what does the timeline look at like for releasing more, especially in some of those hard hit areas like California? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joyce, so this is going to take time. Mm -hmm. Jason says that some of those hard hit areas could see sea stars released potentially in the next couple of years, but California le leaders specifically are being cautious and are waiting for the study that officially names the cause of the disease to be released, but that is expected to come out any day now.